flash. So um, just to remember uh, to remind you guys, uh, the the project uh, is a first person kind of perspective on a, a travel, um, a time travel to 2030, and it starts in um, in Glasgow uh, in a, an abandoned station in which like. The idea is that uh, kind of um, uh, uh, experiment with an iPhone loop system is uh, happening, and uh, uh, but this kind of experiment has something <coughs> uh, wrong. So, um, allows me to tra time travel in 2030. In which uh, the scenario that uh, I I would be um, empty earth uh, with a with a strange environment in which like it seems uh, everyone had to go away very quickly, uh, and uh, because of uh, reasons uh, determined by the climate change, in which uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> Uh, in which um, the permafrost of the Antarctic uh, uh, was melted, and so the release of uh, toxic substances and bacteria uh, are present in the atmosphere, so that the air is apparently not breathable. I say apparently because um, it's a uh, it's possible like uh, that the scenario is rather like no 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 real, but maybe there is another reason. Like that uh, led the government to uh, uh, to make other people think um, that that is the reason. Uh, the few humans that still inhabit Earth are um, they hide in those uh, that I call the, the space elevators, and they are able. They're not able to uh, to stay outside of those. Um, if not for just uh, like one hour, um, with uh, the precautions um, that are needed, so like masks, uh, oxygen, and whatever, in order not to get sick. And um, say so. Basically, this led uh, to the, the creation of uh, this kind of um, new world, which is uh, an incredible mega structure uh, that uh, surrounds. Heard in a, that this seems like an exaggeration of um, of uh, the principles that uh, we can read or uh, in some theoretical kind of um, writings of such as Delirious New York, in which like uh, the streets become the building themselves. So like uh, as I wrote here, uh, they it's like uh, the problem of um, overcrowding and uh, overpopulation was solved in creating a new uh, congestion instead in a new um, uh, a superstructure that is um, this one, basically, uh, with the concept of an hyperloop system that runs around Earth and um, uh, a cylinder as a, as a, a gravitational uh, centri centripet gravitational system that uh, allows uh, the uh, new Earth uh, to look like this. So um, um, this is like um, the, the how the new world uh, would look like if uh, that happened. Um, uh, so. You see here an example of uh, one of those cities, and in particular, I focus on uh, the definition of uh, this vertical uh, monstrous tower that um, is like a re-elaboration of um, of, uh, of the symbols uh, of uh, uh, like a, as in delirious New York uh, is. is it's a, like an exaggeration of uh, taking the symbols of the old world and melting them all together in order to create something that is uh, overly like uh, we can say 
um, mythological or rather monumental uh, in a way in which the, the symbols themselves disappear in this uh, they're not um oh my god oh my god uh, they're not um uh, understandable from uh the point of view of uh, people and uh, they um so the idea is that uh, the, the tower itself has always been like um has, has always had this uh idea of um uh, a monument to the sky so something that uh, is by itself um it has a characterization of um, uh, of, of power, of course, and uh, centralization. So it's kind of a, like a center of attraction for people that uh, are in a way um, scared and attracted to them. So that uh, people would leave specifically around these places, but also in uh, uh, so it's some bottom part of this tower. Um, uh, so, <coughs> uh, so even Mother Lord, uh, uh, like uh, reading Mother Lord, I um, I came across with the, the concepts that uh, uh, the, um, the the signs themselves, uh, like those that could be signs of power of the, the old world perhaps in which um, we can say we recognize a landmark of a city because it has uh, its own importance inscribed in that system that in a uh, you know it's like a free you know in a system of mythology uh, that is a mythology of uh, of, of invention um it's not every symbol is not uh, understandable or it couldn't be extrapolated and have a meaning as for itself um, and that's what would happen I think in a, in a system like this uh, in a in, a, um, in an exaggerated manner as well so um, um, so this tower is uh, is the same kind of structure and um, uh, it's uh, he it, it has different you know um inspiration for example so those for example are some of the symbols that i have taken from um london for uh, in this case uh re-elaborated and uh they could uh, in a way it kind of help me give them the shape to um, uh, to this tower um so uh, the idea is that there's a, a first kind of level in which the residential uh, parts are uh, a government uh, level uh, that is classified in a secret uh, way, and and then the the most part is the um it's it's the entertainment part, uh, which is uh, a series of uh, levels in which uh, basically what what happens is that is um I mean the the most of it most importance of the, the tower is uh, given to this uh, entertainment entertainment because uh, the, the concept of having uh, those um, those places in which one could get lost uh, is the essence of capitalism in a way uh, you know those kind of junk spaces or rather uh, conglomeration of um, absences uh, that are the same everywhere and uh, uh, that um, yeah, they just to share like um, over and over. They just uh, uh, are characterized by what they're not char characterized from. So it's uh, all in all on um, the negative of uh, what uh, architecture is. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, the idea is uh, is that and. Uh, um, and so um, I'd say, like, again, the, due to the uh, over exaggeration of, uh, of symbol, symbolism that might be there, uh, the, um, the meaning is lost. And uh, this kind of places look like, look like uh, an airport, a train station at the same time um, as 
enormous malls um, in which one could get lost and just uh, spend the day, spend uh, their lives um, uh, in a, yeah, in a, uh, just uh, being part of it, uh, part of the system. Um, <clears throat> so here, there is the, in the center, there is um, uh, the hyperloop system. Uh, so uh, I imagine that like uh, a space uh, like like that could look um, in a way something like this. So with a series of floors, and uh, yeah, that's uh, a, like um, movable perhaps, and uh, even that they connect several different uh, levels one to each other. Uh, creating some sort of labyrinth, but at the same time, like a very clear uh, direction, um, direction uh, uh, route that you might uh, have it there. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, this is uh, like um, uh, what I thought of. Um, obviously, like I needed to, yeah. I wanted to have to do that more um, in a more exhaustive way, uh, but this is a little bit the idea. <laughs> Considering I was doing another course uh, all the all this time, so I was pretty busy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, right. We're here. Okay. Yep, yeah. we're here. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a, a bit the uh, the, the, the things. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think it's really interesting. You know, I I I remember this project um, from a couple of weeks mm -hmm. back. Yeah, and there's the something say that the, there was something there's something about it now which I think is really is really nice like the the layout that you've got it reads to me like your project almost wants to be a graphic novel where one side is um some type of provocative architectural image like the ones that you have there and on the left hand side it's these short pieces of text that very concisely critique and the only way I can describe it is Mm. what we put our faith into when we're designing because I, I i i'm really glad that you took the time to read delirious new york and uh Baudrillard's system of objects and junk space because they, they are good texts i mean granted they're very long but they, they are good but what they all have in common is they do call into question that you know the systems that we've had in play for such a long time um they change and they change sometimes without us knowing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of what you're alluding to where in 2030, we have left this old world behind and this new one that sits in front of us is gonna be a completely different system where the old system won't make sense to us. Um, sorry, the new system won't make any sense to us because we've been looking at the old one for so long. But if we let go of looking at the old one, then the new one will start to make sense on its own. Mm which is a bit like what you were talking about, the, the, the signs. Um, yeah. and this, they only make sense when you put something next to it to be like, okay, it's not mm -hmm. that. You know? Yeah. Um, I would love to see this, um, uh, this presentation in kind of like a small, um, almost booklet-like um, setting. So you have a small piece of text on the left-hand side or on the right, depending on how you choose it where in your own mm -hmm. words you're critiquing something specific and then full page bleed the other side um these these wonderful diagrams and drawings and thoughts that you know are very pr provocative of what you're writing about on the other side and then the whole thing stands yeah. up as a as a critique on how we how we put our faith into things in design i remember yeah, yeah. Alan, remember alan gave you um the 12 stories by super studio last time yeah. I think, yeah, certainly, like what Alan just said, you can really go full force um, towards that direction and even design mm -hmm. 
the page, like the, the tabs, you can even design it, right? So this page reads maybe like a poster or comic or something like that. But even the text, you can you can design it. You can make certain letters bold or interacting with the um, the diagrams or the drawings that you have produced. And I also noticed you actually have an interest in complex and organic geometries. Mm. <laughs> they, are very, they are quite detailed, actually, if you go mm. up to that diagram where you, you, you say the new symbol. That, that drawing, if you put it full screen, I think you can, I can still see a lot of details. In Which that one? Concept. Sorry. If you go up, scroll Those? up. I think that's a delay. I'm still looking at the uh, mega towers. Even the mega tower is quite mm -hmm. very complex and organic geometry. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to, um, I was gonna, um, I didn't have much time, but I was going uh, to change it as well. Um, it's still um, a little bit um, playing with, uh, with the shape because, uh, yeah, I would like to have a more a sort of, so, the idea is that there are some symbols uh, that I uh, take when I shoot from uh, this example was London, uh, and uh, and then I'm, I'm, I I uh, I let this new building look like the symbols rem uh, remember remind them of that. So I wanted to have more uh, uh, more um, similarity to 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 the two uh, in a way that. Um, uh, yeah, there's more uh, sophistication, but um, also understanding of the shape because, uh, like this, perhaps it's a little bit not architectural. Um, but yeah, I will see. Uh, I wanted to add more to that for sure. Mm. If if that's one of your many interests, you can also like pick up new software to do that more efficiently. Yeah. And Effectively, I don't know, like Blender, Blender, the new Blender mm. release 3.1 has sub the well, same as Rhino 7. I think mm -hmm. sub the can be quite, um, quite a powerful tool for you to do this. Yeah, and then there's a certain way to do it. Then I'm, I'm sure if it, this is your interest, then you can really, you know, pick it up. Uh, mm -hmm. Get a new or get a few webinar to learn new software and help you all nice. push push your interest. But that can so be quite I completely then, agree with them. Yeah, and then combining your your interest in the uh, theoretical text can be quite interesting, right? Like very interesting critique on the larger systems, like capitalism or like architecture with capitalism and, and urban mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah. how to say urban fabrics you, you are extracting the symbols or um, parts of the city and morph morph it into a very very dense drawing yeah can mm -hmm. you go up and I just look at the drawing? But I guess the same comments is still applicable to your projects. It's the selection. Like, um, mm. it's, it's hard to say whether or not you, how to, how to read, like, is that like, how, how did you select those moments? Or how did you select certain um, buildings or, or, or like how you, decided to, mm -hmm. you know, from Hyperloop to the um, city of London into, yeah, this, this drawing. I, I thought this is a great drawing. It's really nice. How did you do okay. this? How? Um, it's just a rhino, really, a uh, grasshopper for those. Um, but uh, the, this one is just a surface with... Um, uh, flow on surface, so no even grasshopper. <laughs> and oh, nice. uh, yeah, I was uh, the, the whole course was on grasshopper, which by the way, then it uh, was very useful. That's also why I, I, um, I say 
uh, I wanted to, uh, to, to do more because uh, I was doing another course right now and I kind of abandoned this one, but uh, I used a lot of Grasshopper for this other course. So it will be, and I, and I kind of starting of understanding you know, the many possibilities behind it. And Don't yeah, I found it abandon. very, very interesting. <laughs> Don't abandon this project. <laughs> Yeah, please don't abandon us. <laughs> no, I think it, it, it's definitely uh, something that you take time to understand uh, how the script works and the logic of all the scripts. Yeah. And yeah, I'm glad you made this yeah. launch. It's, it, it shows your concept quite well. And also, I think you uh, at the end, you found the, the right skill and scope for your project. Because I think at the beginning, you were very ambitious going all of the scale from from human body to all the way to out outer space and i, I think <laughs> yeah. this is this is a i think this is a good scope uh, where you have the uh, bold concepts and it's more like a statement and i think yeah i think this is uh, going quite well <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ben. No, it's true. Like, for example, mm -hmm. I, I was just thinking, like, looking at this drawing, you can present mm -hmm. it as a whole, and then you can also, you can certainly, like, zoom into certain part of this yeah. massive drawing, and then you write a text about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it, it reads, you, you build up the sequence, and then you just, like, mm -hmm. uh, present. If you, you need to present it, now it's too dense. It's kind of, it needs a level of translation for your audience to follow your, um, your project. Mm -hmm. You have quite serious uh, interest yeah. with, with the uh, architecture geometry and, and you know, the, the text that you have read. Mm, I can see quite a clear direction, but that needs a level of translation so that the project is more accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Joya, I, I sent you a link in the chat to, um, I, I don't even know if you can call it a project. I just remember seeing it um, a number of times throughout my mm -hmm. career. And I can really see yeah. your project mm -hmm. going in this type of direction. Yeah. I don't know if you know this project. Have you seen some of these postcards before? Let me see. So it's, I think it's Bernard Schumi's Postcards of Architecture. Uh, and also, there's, there's like, it has a title and it um, usually has I a very... Have, but, yeah. Um, I will take a look. That's yeah, absolutely. Because if, yes. you were to, if you were to produce one per drawing that you have along with the text that you have um, written yourself or acquired... Then there's also another level of your project, which is depending on the order that you show them to your, um, uh, I don't know, to the person who you're presenting to, you change the narrative. Because if you start by saying the way that you did today, which is one of the ways that you can do it, we need to leave the old in order to accept the new. Um, that's one way of doing it. But if you if you if you show the postcards or the 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 kind of pages okay. in a different order. You can really build up a, a very different hard-hitting narrative which ends on a twist almost um, because it doesn't necessarily have to be you know mm. old is bad new is good it could literally be a question you could be is this really where we want to be going you know you can guide the person mm -hmm. who you're presenting to in a direction and then either lead them to the end or make them really question what they've believed in so far mm. yeah that does that's a good idea. In a way, you are inventing a methodology, right? Mm. So perhaps you can yeah. keep, keep using or keep developing your own methodology to present, always present uh, with an image and mm -hmm. uh, a short text that you've written and then like build it out. Maybe eventually it becomes a very thick um, sort of like dictionary or... Yeah. A book or atlas maybe mm -hmm. atlas would be more accurate yeah, that's very interesting. you know like you have a certain you, you, you mm, yeah you you have mm -hmm. you have like a clear 
structure to your investigation and then you like keep adding the pages to build up the overall uh, knowledge or maybe narrative. Yeah, I agree. I'm just reading through some of these postcards and they're quite, they're quite uh, hard. Yeah, maybe, like, maybe next time when, maybe next time when you visit, um, when you visit I don't, New York. I don't see Sorry, uh, now I was thinking that now you're looking at London, maybe next time when you visit New York or Manhattan, then you have a different way of looking at Manhattan than now uh, Ram Kohas when he was 27. Mm. Yeah. That 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 can be can be yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, it's the same. I was looking at the Yeah, when I visited you. No, I think I think. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. Indeed. At the end of the day, I I found that uh, this is the every city really. Uh, so I would have liked, yeah, I would have liked to have a more um like a characterization more specifically for London, for example, and then do the same for another city uh, and see that like maybe there are little differences, but at the same time, there is uh, this, this thing that is uh, proving what I was saying that at the end of the day. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Yes, yes, yes. I think that can be quite a romantic way to do this architecture. Connection is not perfect. Hello. Yeah, I think it's like the the way to um like writing that uh little book or novel. It sounds like uh was huh? It's it. Was it, it, someone talking? Because I can you hear me? Who was talking? I can. Ben? I can hear you, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. If you're talking, I can hear you. Can you, can you hear me now? I can hear David. I Hello? can hear David, but no Ben. Oh. oh really? I can <laughs> hear both of you. Okay. But yeah, I think I think what Alan suggested, uh, it's going to make it more, more like a novel and almost like a documentary of a, of a, Imaginary. Yes, yes. Yes, Hello? Yeah. Yes. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I think. I am me too uh, at the moment. Yeah, the internet connection is a bit funny. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's great. I think I think it was really, really great for Alan to identify your ambition and kind of like pointed a um direction for this project, which you you seem to agree. And that was great. Otherwise, mm, I think we will we will be sort of like the mine pushing. is horrible and uh, that's uh, a thing I don't know if you have the same problem I stop sharing so that maybe okay can you hear us now can you hear us okay I can hear both of you okay yes uh, yeah yeah no, I was just saying that it was really great for Alan to identify your ambition and then you, you seem to agree with his direction and then uh, the project. David was talking and then it's coming yes. to. Uh, yeah, no, no, totally. totally. Uh, no, I think it's, um, 
those hints are very interesting and uh, like I, I like the, the idea of creating something uh, really um, with this powerful graphic and uh, yeah. text that uh, is there but is you not know, the main thing but at the same time like is, is like I wouldn't say aphorisms but uh, some, something strong to say about movement specifically I think I uh, think that would work absolutely I think it's important Joya because you know when the most important thing we have as designers is our identity and our identity is usually formed by the thoughts and experiences that we have. And I've, I've done processes like what you're going through right now um, many, many times. And mm -hmm. it, it's not to say that I could present them and have someone be like, oh my God, yes, that's a great design. No, it's more just so that the next time I come to design, I have a series of thought processes and I'm already equipped with my own opinion um mm -hmm. that take it or leave it for when it comes to a, a sequence of design processes um we can we can offer something more than just telling people how to put materials together yeah yeah i have to say this this would be one of the most difficult ways in architecture <laughs> so hard rewarding but hard yes yes it's going to be quite <laughs> It's going to be quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a, a blind. Lot of people, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, like writing like that can really inspire a lot new thinking mm -hmm. about architecture. But in a way, a lot of people will also disagree with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but, which is good as well. I mean, disagreement is necessary. <laughs> It, it also it also goes with the the times because a lot of the books that we've all read uh, throughout our uni they were written mm -hmm. in response to a time and that time being post-war and modernism so you know they had mm -hmm. reason to write nowadays maybe it's more about data collection and experimentation than it is about say critical thinking and writing maybe that comes again later in a another hundred years time who knows yeah. um, but people will always write and people will always experiment it's just uh, it's also responding to your time yeah well there's a lot to respond to this time as well but at the moment maybe <laughs> for us it's still very not clear um, mm. we should wait uh, for the 2030 actually maybe, maybe yeah give a response <laughs> more yeah then uh, no yeah it's more data collection then that that comes the question about presentation how you present this like if this is like a short clip if you make it into a video okay. you know like would people be more readily um you know like digest the writing or the meaning behind your writing if you turn the drawings into some sort of animation or mm. animated um, diagrams or if, if you can go I keep pushing it turn it into something that is quite sci-fi you know yeah uh, well I remember a couple of times ago uh, we were talking about the after effects and the possibility to uh, have uh, the line drawings move uh, to the I think it still applies quite well to, to this um, it could be possible to do that since um, some of the, the drawings are or could be line drawings uh, in a way. So I, I could try with that. I think it would be interesting. Mm. Yeah, like draw, line drawings or renders or whatever that you are comfortable with or you, you, you want to experiment with. It's mm. the... Um, the presentation format, I think that can be also quite um, crucial in reaching mm -hmm. reaching a larger audience. Of course. I mean, we certainly don't want to write something or create a project that only four people are interested. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, but how, did, how did you, how did you find, how did you find the the project what would you say is the uh, kind of like the 
a momentary conclusion that you can draw from your research? Um, so uh, for me, like it was, um, it was indeed very open mind, a mind opening. So right, uh, because uh, you like when you're thinking about the future, you have a. Uh, uh, at the same time, the complexity of our, of the project of architecture, but at the same, uh, also like you have to imagine uh, those things. So the possibilities are really infinite, uh, or it, be, it can become something very complex. And like, uh, so in a way, thinking of this, like um, I I tend not to think about. Uh, I don't know the future or something incredible because usually I'm quite I don't know just that I'm usually rational about uh, projects or whatsoever. So this was um, a very interesting, I'd say, and challenging. Um, uh, and I think like uh, yeah, when I, I think it should be a good practice for yourself as an architect in general to do that um, for yourself or for others to. And not being too obsessed with uh, the rationality and things that uh, work, or at, at least uh, having it, but to a certain extent, making it work. Okay. Um, but yeah, being a little bit imaginative. I, I think it was um, good if that was a question. <laughs> I'm not completely sure. <laughs> it's really just a discussion. It's okay. I think, like, what what was the most difficult you found? Like the research or the production or like producing those drawings? Um, or... The research, I am okay with researching, but uh, there's a moment in which uh, I have to put everything together that uh, I I wouldn't say I hate, but almost because like I, uh, yeah, I overthink perhaps sometimes. So that was difficult, but uh, yeah, also like maybe translating into drawing. Mm. I think, I think in a way we failed to get you um, to script yourself to to put your materials into a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> As you can see, like well, Mo Moni, 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 like put her presentation into a PowerPoint and she scripted herself. Yeah, it's like quite, you know, the presentation is quite complete. Um, but I noticed that you still stay in mm -hmm. uh, Photoshop and a long post. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Which is um, great. I was thinking of doing it, but uh, I kind of like this continuity, but maybe if I, it would have been better in a way, in a classical. No, the long, the long poster can be good. Like if you want to yeah. um, you know, upload your own project to your Instagram, your own website, your own blog. And it can be a great, great okay. format, but just like for presentation, um, mm -hmm. I would still encourage you to, you know, like structure yeah, yeah, your definitely. presentation from the beginning, like some initial research and then like a design mm -hmm. yeah. proposal. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes a presentation is as important as the concept because you have to communicate it clearly through some sort of media so that people would understand what you're saying and yeah yeah choosing the right method of presentation is also important that reflects uh, the kind of concept that you're proposing yeah well, I agree. Um, yeah this is it's it's like um i know we are repeating right but this is a really really it will be really helpful even when you are in an office. Yeah, transferable yeah. skills. No, that, that's fine, I know, I know, I know. It was just uh, like, um, uh, mostly because of that uh, thematic, uh, it helped me having uh, everything in the same page in a way. It was a little bit egoistic perhaps, but I usually, I agree that a presentation slide mm. Useful. I mean, you can have both. But, uh, I forgot. <laughs> too much time passed. Uh, but yeah, I was very, uh, I mean, 
uh, I was working into it, but it's been quite an intense period as well because I transferred again, I got sick again. <laughs> so I tried my best. <laughs> Okay. No, you um, need to. Uh, you you need to you really need to cultivate these habits, uh, building, mm. you know, like building up your own storyboard or your own um, storyline, right? To your presentation, you can just mm. do a screen, do a screenshot. Even if you fail to export it, get maybe the file or the file management and things like that. A screenshot. I should, no, no, I learned that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's even better quality. So why not? <laughs> For some reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I agree. But um, so I was, I was thinking uh, since the way we were talking about a video, uh, would you say it, it would have been better to have a video for this kind of thing or uh, still because of the slides in PowerPoint is uh, the best? The question. I would suggest you to if, do videos. Ah, uh, okay. If I could, I, I would. I think that would be. I think that would be an experiment. Like when you are writing something quite mm -hmm. com complex, quite dense, and how would the audio or the sequence of images help mm -hmm. help me or help the audience to? To follow you on your writing. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think when you have multiple aspects in like different concepts uh, in all the text and it yeah, it could be just a really simple uh, visual and like it could be a video format but then all the visuals doesn't have to be animated in a way mm -hmm. so it it could be uh, so I've seen successful videos with uh, presentation styles that are uh, presented almost like still uh, still images on films old films and then they have like a voiceover and I think it's just to create that atmosphere and then it's also practicing your storytelling technique. And as yeah. you started doing the videos and recordings, you will, you can listen to them again, and then you'll find out there may be better sequence of presenting the stories. So it's, mm -hmm. it's about refining what you have at the moment, and then to present it in the format that it deserves. In a way, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, it's not you, you become, not only you're presenting the way you're performing, that can be helpful. I remember saying this, I think, I, I, I knew it. I, I, I knew like um, Edinburgh graduates tend to be more reluctant in uh, adopting video formats or voiceover, or even like, you know, like building your, own presentation yeah, yeah. Um, really, really, there were some great videos from the graduate of uh, my year uh no mine <laughs> but uh voiceover mm -hmm. I, I, I knew it a lot of people were yeah. really not tend to adopt or yeah. to 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 pay enough attention to a presentation so like they like um the work they, they do the drawing, the design to the very last minute and then fail to print the drawings for the presentation. I remember that yeah. so clearly. <laughs> because, because like, they, like we were told like, you know, like the design is, it's, you know, the messing, the model, the drawings, but there, there was no emphasis on the presentation, not clearly. Mm. Yeah, it's like implied, but not, not clear, clearly up. Um, articulated to the students mm. and, and this is really to our disadvantage i think yeah it should be more important time is equally, equally let's say equally important like if it's more yeah. important i think it would make you I uncomfortable agree. <laughs> I, agree. I think i think it depends though because i remember the two after I graduated from Edinburgh and then the first year I joined AA, I was so confused 
because one of the best presentations that um, got nominated for the honors, the students spent the entire year perfecting 10 drawings, just 10. He set them out from the very beginning. He said, these are the 10 types of drawings I'm going to do. And he spent the entire year, you know, polishing them off. And me being wow. in the year below um, and having come out of an Edinburgh um, style of education, I had maybe 100, 150 drawings on the table and I could only really talk about 15 of them, maybe, maybe even 10. And when I wandered over, I was like, how did you do that? And he said, well, the trick is if I spent, I made sure that these 10 drawings are the best 10 drawings that would have ever been produced in my time. And I presented them well, and I got so used to presenting them um, that, you know, it, it, it was natural. It just, it, it rolled off the tongue. There was no question about what was coming next and what was predecessing it. Um, but it's, it's just, it's interesting. It's a different way of presenting and thinking about things. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important yeah, well, lessons took from the AA. I think we, we did it in practice as well at, at Foster and Partners. We, we just uh, set up certain views and then we update that view every time. And then mm. we, yeah, we never changed the angle of the view so that you could always compare the progress you made throughout uh, different stages. And mm. also you could compare different options around um, yeah, I think setting up presentation is really as important as um, as the the design itself, because you you can have a an amazing design that no one understands it, and that would just be a design that no one understands. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Cultivate, cultivate this habit and this way thinking and approaching a project it will be very helpful and hopefully that's also something like you really took from this workshop yeah like, i need to practice that yeah yeah uh was there a question or? um not, not really just um <laughs> okay no. uh, yeah. i need to practice that i guess um, but you need to, yeah. Because in, yeah, you need to, uh, because uh, when, from, from midterm to the final presentation, you you still haven't um try haven't tried you know presenting with um, slides. Yeah. Or I think that when you're also when you're designing something, it's important to have in mind how you're going to present this and what's the best yeah. format to present this when you're designing it. It's not easy, <laughs> but yeah. I got it. I, I well, know, it but uh, really, really made it. If you, like if you have any future projects, you should start thinking about how you can, how you can present this in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, it's absolutely a problem of mine in terms of I, uh, I waste a lot of energies in uh, creating the thing, like uh, 3D modeling or stuff. Uh, I get really into it. Uh, and then I forget that actually what I'm going to show is a frame of the thing. So, uh, yeah. Really yeah, some, some people structure the, uh, the drawings around how they're going to present it. So they write the speech first, like a synopsis. And then mm -hmm. they will have every drawing to align with every uh, subparagraphs in in the in text. And then when you go through the drawings, you'll know exactly which one that you have to, what what points are you're about to make. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's optimizing the times as well. Oh, I see. I see Adrian's here. Any any comments from Adrian? Hey guys, sorry I was Hello. a bit late. Hello. Yeah, no, I got light, and also I missed the um, a few like two weeks ago. I've, I missed the presentation, so I was quite impressed. But I completely agree in the in terms of the um, storyboard or the presentation, and it's something that we work since the beginning. 
I think it's very important because when you set it up like a, a storyboard, you are producing just the drawings. And I think it's a great example of what Alan said. It's like if you have 10 drawings, you are always focused on those and you perfectly know how to explain all of them. Instead of when I thought I think it was Alan, right? Or maybe it was Debbie. Same. But anyway, in that case, when you have 150 drawings, and that happened to me as well, in some of them, you can think like, oh, it's not that powerful what you are saying about the drawing. Maybe the project it is, but you are showing your weakness in those kind of drawings that you are like more like in, a, in doubt or you are not sure if you should present it or to submit it. In any way, it's good to have it, but I will be focused just like in some of them and then produce like those amazing drawings that everyone wants wants to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it's very useful. And also it's like, it's something that we will apply for our career. It's not just like for a, a specific project. I think it's something very interesting that oh. we have to work on. And I'm not saying it's just you, it's for everyone because at the end of the day, our career is gonna be long. I guess so um, I think it's just <laughs> it's just about that it's very important to to have that strength and it's something that all the studios they are working on at, at the end of the day that's communication and it's something that mm -hmm. I think also they should for example I don't know like some universities they are more focused on that task how to present how to communicate and I think it's very very important and congrats because also the project I think yes. it takes a lot from the last time that I saw it. And I think it's very good. And it will be good for you to synthesize everything in, in some slides or the way that you want to present it or in a video or whatever you want to do. But I think it's good to yeah. summarize everything. Thank you. Thank you. Very helpful. Hmm. Yeah, I think just like a final wish, like don't abandon the project. And <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would be a shame to save it as a PSD, right? Like all the drawings that you made, and they are looking very good, and they are great. And would be a, a shame to save like a PSD. And what well, I've done, I made my workshop. I learned a lot of these things, but yeah. I think you can summarize. Come back to it because yeah, I was pretty busy, so yeah, I will. Uh, I will do that definitely. I need to do something. Yeah, I think from our experience, like in a few years, you will think like, oh, it's a shame that I didn't up, uh, like I didn't upgrade my portfolio, including this and this and that. And it's very useful. And if you can do it now, I would be tempted to do it because then so when you have to, I don't know, to redo your portfolio, it's almost like a project when you have to do your portfolio. So we don't want to have like two projects at the same time or tasks that you didn't do before. So if you can grab it and get it done. I think you are gonna, it's worth doing it. You can almost take the really long poster and then do a slow pan. So you finish the drawing and then do a mm. really slow pan and make it into an animation. So it slowly moves up the screen, almost like the Star Wars intro. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> and da, da. <laughs> <laughs> So you could you can have the really long poster animated by moving it slowly up the screen. Okay. So okay. it so it becomes like a Star Wars type intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and if, so you you have one piece to show for which contains all your core ideas and yeah. You could put background mm -hmm. music if you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's Voice over cool. even better. In After Effects, you can find some videos and it's just one animation and then animate the text as well. Um, I, think, I think that would be good. Yeah. Yep. It's a statement piece. <laughs> not, not a PSD file. <laughs> hmm. And in terms of yeah. the writing, in terms of the writing, I was thinking like maybe maybe it can be even longer. You you need to elaborate some of your, your points. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean it could be even longer. It's not necessarily uh, because uh, like uh, what well, um some things need to elaborate. So 
uh, I don't I don't know if it's gonna be very short sentences as the posters we were talking about. Uh, I'll I mean, see about it. But... Something that I was missing, and maybe you can also include this. Instead of all the drawings, they are like big scale. Maybe you can do some drawings like the ones that you have, uh, like in a small, in a small size, like a uh, smaller scale, like more di diagrammatic and explaining a few parts of the project. Mm -hmm. And that could be, yeah, one thing that you can do. And it's not going to be like a huge amount of time to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have like a small pieces to explain a few parts of the project, yeah, or even drawings. I mean, mm -hmm. one thing, one thing I want to discuss with you and Alan is that I I noticed that in your presentation, like each of the drawings or we call them the chapters, they are quite abstract at the moment, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I know I know you are making um some statements or arguments about the larger systems so there will be a level of extraction needed so i was wondering if still coming back to the circular diagram like you, you make a flow and of the city right and then into that that cylinder i wonder mm -hmm. if like in with this level oh, okay. of extraction statement does it help to make some very specific reference to the city, like to a particular street, to a particular building, to a, to a very specific items? Yeah, I think that, yeah, it's, that that's be? the idea. I mean, at the end of the day, the cities, they are composed by layers. And I think you can extract all the layers of a city and then explain on that drawing the different layers that you have in this new city. Like uh, in here, for example. Yeah. Screen sharing, screen sharing. Stay at that uh, loading moment. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I'm curious. Like, um... Curious, like, what do you think, Alan? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I Adrian, 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 so Adrian. Layers of the city, meaning um, literally. I'm still waiting for the screen to load. I don't know if it's uh, my internet. I'm still waiting, so. It's my internet, most likely. Still waiting as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to get you to discuss like uh, with this level of abstraction in um, sort of theoretical text. Mm. Will including a very specific item, specific street into city, kind of like this, um, making it or destroying the the intention. I think it depends on what ultimately you want to achieve. If your goal is to show that what you're saying is or has value slash, I'm not going to use the word correct, but is fundamentally rooted in observations, then yes, I think having abstract drawings next to ones that are very concrete, landed in a particular location with a rationale as to why you've landed it there, um, and that can be a, that can be photography. It can be a video. It can be a drawing um, um, that is not literal, but much closer to the real than the abstract. Uh, then they usually complement each other because then you can talk about the abstract idea and then you can see it landing in a particular location. But if your mm -hmm. ambition is simply to have a sequence of ideas and critiques about um, a particular topic, in this case, say faith and architectural practice, mm. um, you may not necessarily need to land it, um, but you do need to lean into the skid. What that means is um, the writing needs to be very concise and in your own words, the mm. structure in which you present the ideas needs to be completely aligned with um, what it is that you're saying. And similarly, diagrammatically, they need to all be at, this, at, at a similar kind of level of abstraction, but not so abstract that we can't, um, as 
uh, as architects understand them but more if you have one that's more grounded than the other then you might start to draw focus to the wrong parts so i think mm -hmm. it, it does it does come down to a question of what it is you want to achieve mm. okay i see so in a way like if you are making statements at this level you don't want to bring your reader's eye down to the very specific object and then move mm. the eye up again to this abstract level and then move it down again move it that up. that's just i agree but that's just my interpretation because if you if you land what you're saying incorrectly it draws mm. more problems than it does uh bolster your argument and if you yeah. land it if you land it incorrectly as as you were mentioning you know drawing the eye up drawing the, the eye down if you land it incorrectly then they might start to lose faith in what it is you're trying to say mm. Yeah, um, the, and then the reading will be slower and then less smooth, right? Mm, mm. Mm. Okay, so perhaps maybe like this project can stay at this abstract level. But it needs to accept the fact that it's at that level and that's the level it wants to operate at. So allow it to be at that level. Mm. Yeah, you see, like now, even even with your drawing, the eye of the reader is really like this semi uh, or aerial, half aerial view, looking at mm. the city, it's really up but high above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not perspective. Oh, I mean, it could be from the uh, icon loop, but could this could be? be Go ahead, David. Yeah, I think maybe maybe this is a way to organize the the reader's eye or the eye of the readers. You have a diagram where you show the Earth from space. Then maybe you can rearrange the sequence, like the eye move from space mm -hmm. down to uh, continent, down to country mm -hmm. level, down to the city level, down to uh, somewhere. You want you want the eye to land. Yeah. So reorganizing, so changing the points points of view. Uh, well, it's a, li a little bit of a, like this, but um, are you saying like I could be more um, developed as a thing? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Can you, I can. I I would suggest you to organize it in a way in terms of the height. Maybe this is a really simple organization idea that you zoom oh yeah, that's that's like the, the drawing right one one to ten or something from space mm -hmm. zooming keep zooming in keep zooming in and then mm. maybe last one will be the hyperloop station that you show in the beginning or the other way around you keep zooming out mm -hmm. right. so you know, yeah so in a way that's still like a clear organization to the writing to the drawings to the to this project. Now it's jumping in between scales, like from the station to the earth and then back to the city. And then the next one is zooming into a mega tower. Yeah, these, these are suggestions, but I think you, you should picture how you want this project to be perceived by people that are trying to understand your project. Mm -hmm. So you should think about how this project would be what, uh, the best way to present it. And yeah, you have to do it justice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so first, uh, we'll study a little bit how, mm, but mm, it's good hints. I mean, I will definitely come back to the recording as well. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> Understand, but first maybe I will. I, I mean, I will try to get it better and uh, organize it, and then see um, about too many suggestions about so the mm. point of view, for example. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, guys. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Okay. Take right. care. See you again. Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks for your presentation.
Thank you for the time. And bye. Bye, Jaya. See you. Bye. Bye bye. See you. See you.